Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Clear Politics Takeaway for Tuesday, January 12th. I'm Tom Bevan, co founder and president of Real Clear Politics. And I'm Carl Cannon, Washington Bureau Chief for RCP during this very quiet transition period, Tom. <laughs> Carl, let's talk about the uh, impeachment that's going on. Looks like the Democrats are going to vote tomorrow in the House of Representatives. They're sort of speeding forward on impeachment and wanting basically Nancy Pelosi issued a ultimatum to Mike Pence, either invoke the 25th Amendment or we're going to impeach the president. And it looks like the latter is going to happen. I don't think the former is going to happen at all. So where is all this headed and, and what does it mean for the incoming administration? Well, the incoming administration, I, I, I guess we don't know yet if that's the very brief Mike Pence administration that would last a day or two. But you really mean the Biden administration. You know what? It's it's put Joe Biden in, in an awkward position, in my view. He he has he ran as a person who wanted to unify the country, and he said he said repeatedly. I've talked about it on this on this podcast that he would work as hard for the people who didn't vote for him as the people who did. He'd be the president of all the people. Right. Um, you know, half the Trump voters still think the election was stolen from him, taking their cue from the president. So, you know that compromise is not an easy thing to to come to these days, but it's, it's put the test to Joe Biden. Does he, does he tell the congressional leaders, Hey, let's, let's lower the temperature or does he get behind their effort? And, you know, they've made their case all week on, on cable TV and, you know, they, we have well, to act. They let, say we, we have no choice. Well, obviously they have a choice, but they feel strongly about it and they want to have this stigma, the stigma attached to Trump that he was removed for office. They tried it. You know, remember we already had a vote this time last year. They did they, did it in the House. And it's the same players. Adam Schiff was on Morning Joe today, uh, you know, and the Senate didn't go along. I, I just don't Adam know. Schiff was on Morning Joe. Pardon? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Adam Schiff still still talking, still being invited on cable news shows. Well, he has his story and he's sticking to it. He wants to well, impeach right. Donald Trump. <laughs> right. <laughs> but let me ask you this. Why hasn't Biden weighed in yet? I mean, what's he waiting for? What is the why wouldn't he? <clears throat> really did want to do what you said he did, right? Which is unite the country. Why wouldn't he nip this in the bud? Why is he going to wait till they vote? Why is he letting this proceed at all? If he really does want to lower the temperature, I, I would think that he would either, you know, privately phone Nancy Pelosi or publicly come out and say, look, this is not a good idea. Well, I don't, we don't know what he's done privately. I, I Look, I don't think Pelosi's probably not in a position to be able to control it. You know, she didn't, she didn't want to impeach him. Well, she the first wants time. it. She didn't want to do it the first time, Tom. You remember she that. She clearly wants to do it this time, Carl. Well, she was hauled out from her desk, you know, bodily by people protecting her. Her staff cowered under the desk for two hours. Yeah, this is per this time she does want to do it, and it's personal for her. What I'm saying is I don't know that Biden, I don't know that she could stop it if she wants to. You point out she, she, she probably does want to. But I don't know that Biden could stop it. You know, these Democrats have now taken... Thanks to Donald so therefore, Trump. he shouldn't weigh in on it if he can't stop it. Well, just let me <laughs> make my point. I'm just I think it's a difficult thing for him. He's got this new majority in the Senate of his party. Uh, well, it's 50 50 with Kamala Harris as the tiebreaker. He's got the House is still in Democratic hands. He doesn't want to come in and alienate his own party. On the other hand, he he you know, his the way he's conducted his public life and the way he conducted this campaign, you'd think he'd want this thing to go away. I don't think it's an easy call for him. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's it's so easy to stop as just picking up the telephone, Tom. No, I agree. But it's very similar to me, anyway, to the situation that he found himself in during the election with the riots that were breaking out around the country. He was silent for a long time. Did not want to really, you know, go out in public and make a statement. Finally, he did, and eventually he got to a place where he condemned the riots, and never in probably the strongest terms, but nevertheless, he did. But it took him a while to get there, and, and we're, it seems like we're in a similar situation where he's he's sort of, you know, biding his time, if you will, and and eventually he's going to have to make a decision about what he's going to do. Well, look, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, Tom. If this, maybe this, there just isn't enough time. What he'd like to be doing, and Donald Trump didn't let him do this for two months, and now the Democratic leadership in Capitol Hill won't let him do it, is be about his transition. He's coming into office. We've got a raging pandemic. Um, n nobody wants in Washington suddenly wants to talk about it. It's killing, you know, 3000 Americans or more a day. He wants to come in. He wants to get the vaccine out. He wants to give a normal, you know, uh, inaugural address, not a campaign speech the way Donald Trump did four years ago. He wants people to accept the election. This is the last thing he needs. 
but he didn't cause the you know he didn't cause it and I I think he's trying to keep his eye on the ball. He wants to come in and be president and get us get it get his own start. He doesn't want to keep having to talk about Donald Trump. I sympathize with that. Does a Senate trial? I've heard this this you know the commentary and, and folks saying, look, a Senate a, 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 an impeachment trial in the Senate would really be a distraction and derail his agenda. I've heard other people say, look, they're just going to vote really quickly. They would get this over quickly, especially if. Chuck Schumer is the majority leader, but Joe Manson was on TV last night on Brett Baer's show and said, look, this is really ill-advised. The votes just aren't there. I mean, even if you get a few senators and you have had people like Lisa Murkowski and Pat Toomey and others say that they would consider impeachment very seriously or even vote in favor of it, you know, that, that may be a handful, but it's not going to get Democrats to the 67 votes they need to convict. So what's the point? Well, that, but I agree with you, Tom. And the other thing is, this is, we're talking, it's eight days from today. Um, you know, is, is the Senate trial going to go on? Are we going to try and impeach a guy who's already out of office? Is this going to go on during Biden's first 100 days? That's the last thing he wants. And, and it would, I think it would strike, you know, anything but diehard, you know, partisans as, as pointless. It, you know, it's, what the Democrats say, though, is that, look, we need to stick a stake in this, in the heart of this guy. We need to get we need to make sure he doesn't run again in 2024. I'm not sure this would do it, um, but the best, you know, the best thing from Biden's standpoint, if that's who we're thinking about, he'd like to he'd like to start as the president without everybody talking about the former president. That, that doesn't seem too much to ask to me. All right. Well, we'll leave it there for this morning. I'm Tom Bevan, co-founder and president of Real Clear Politics, and I'm Carl Cannon, Washington bureau chief for Real Clear Politics, and this has been the RCP Takeaway for Tuesday. January 12th, 2021, eight days before the next presidential inauguration.